was known to authorities when they approached him outside a Massachusetts pharmacy. Evidence was he and a fellow terrorist were planning to cut off the heads of Boston police officers. And when he allegedly pulled out a long blade knife and lunged for FBI agents, he was shot dead. The second man was later arrested. And both were part of ongoing investigations seeking out those who have been turned into ISIS loyalists. A brainwashing authorities are still doggedly trying to decide how to best defeat. Our guest is Associate Dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center and leader of the Center's Digital Hate and Terrorism Program, Rabbi Abraham Cooper is on the hard line. Rabbi Cooper, it's good to see you again. Good to see you, Ed. How are you? Excellent, my friend. We continue to hear this term radicalization. How can we tell if someone has actually been radicalized, or if you don't mind, just a sick mind that hears the words ISIS and decides to turn that into an excuse? Uh, it's a very good question, and it's going to be increasing challenge in terms of now what's being called domestic terrorism. And from the point of view of ISIS, al-Qaeda, al-Shabaab, frankly, at this point, they don't care. All they need to do is to be able to inspire, to connect to someone who's either a loner or is highly ideologically motivated or may even be mentally ill and uh, give them the sense of empowerment and the opportunity to become uh, better trained in order to wreak havoc on uh, neighbors or a specific target across town or, as we saw, uh, last month uh, when we had people from Phoenix going to Texas to uh, execute an activity. Lone wolf more or less means just that. You have an individual or a small group that are motivated. And uh, what we've seen now, uh, really a brilliant application of uh, marketing techniques by ISIS and similar groups in order to uh, reach out and look for a few individuals who might uh, embrace uh, the ideology and have the quote-unquote courage to step over that line. So from the point of view of, of the evildoers, they don't care if it's someone who's uh, psychologically, uh, uh, you know, in trouble uh, or uh, if they hit the jackpot, someone who's ideologically motivated. Let me then focus on the word you used, marketing, in here right now, because I know you've talked to law enforcement, uh, intelligence officials, those who deal in terrorism. What exactly is that? But then again, let's take it a step further. We talk about marketing terror. Is it not fair that we have to get uh, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, Twitter? They've got to get on board on this, and they're a huge part of being able to shut this down. Well, there's no question in my discussions around the globe, whether it's uh, Tokyo or Toronto, it comes back to the same thing, certainly in democracies. Governments alone uh, cannot uh, shut this uh, or even impact on this effort without the direct involvement of the companies, which means uh, not passing new legislation, uh, not uh, taking away people's rights, but having the for-profit companies, starting with Twitter, uh, have uh, rules set up. You want to sign up and deal with a company like Twitter and use their fantastic process? If you cross the line in order to promote terrorism, they have the right to throw you off. And right now, uh, with the exception, I would say, of Facebook, most of the big companies are still reactive to this issue. But let me just and interrupt you here for a second, if I might. I got about 90 seconds left, and I want to get this point out. Isn't it fair to say that the terrorists know that they're being watched by these companies, so they're going to start using keywords, if you will, uh, just making uh, allusions in their conversation? So you've got to dig a whole lot deeper, and you've got to be able to investigate that, find out what those people are saying, and stop them, not just the obvious ones. Well, don't worry in terms of NSA, Homeland Security, they have those tools. But in the meantime, in terms of the loner or an individual in Massachusetts who may be motivated by something that's quite overt and in your face, at the minimum, we need to start degrading that marketing capability because it's, re it's reaping huge benefits uh, for the evildoers around the globe. So 60 seconds left then. Other than these companies getting involved, how then do we slow down that marketing? How do we infiltrate it? Well, I think that um, not only are the uh, uh, police and intelligence involved in monitoring and infiltrating, and so are groups uh, like the Simon Wiesenthal Center, but that really, I think we've reached a tipping point where easy access to this communication and having a sense of who's, um, you know, maybe signing on uh, uh, up against 
the fact that you can't follow every single individual around the globe means that we have to change the paradigm. Otherwise, we're going to see more and more of these quote unquote local uh, uh, activities that could wreak havoc on our uh, democracies and our communities. Rabbi Abraham Cooper, we are finding ourselves once again at a time in life when we must be aware of what's happening, whether it's the individual on the street, the government agencies, we have to always watch because they are going to find ways to infiltrate themselves on society. You and the Simon Wiesenthal Center doing a marvelous job on trying to nail down on this. Rabbi, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Speak to you soon, Ed. All right, take care. It is something that we need to pay close attention to, especially after what happened in Massachusetts here within the last 24 hours. Stay with us. Coming up next, a man who brings friendship, heroism, and sacrifice to the fore.